Welcome back to the Electrical Building Design Show. In this episode, I'm going to give you my thoughts on artificial intelligence in the MEP industry, specifically for design engineers. I'm going to share where AI is going to be most helpful in our industry, where it's going to struggle, and answer the question that's on everyone's mind, is it going to replace your job? I'll talk more about that at the end of the video, but quick spoiler, no, it's not going to replace what you as an engineer are doing. The place where AI has the opportunity to provide the most value for MEP design is in what's called generative design. This is where AI is laying out things for you in a building. Mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers all have the same task of laying out a bunch of devices in a building and then connecting them to their system. That's either going to be diffusers for mechanical engineers, light fixtures and receptacles for electrical engineers, or toilets and sinks for plumbing engineers. For all of those disciplines, the layout of the devices is fairly straightforward. It's not a particularly hard problem to figure out where all the devices go. It's mostly tedious on large buildings getting all of the devices in your model, either inserting devices on your floor plan in CAD or actually modeling them in Revit. There are some rules for where devices should go so you have a well-engineered system, but in terms of engineering, it's not really the complicated part of our jobs. So it's not a stretch to think about a computer being able to do a layout of the devices for you. Maybe it's not gonna be 100% correct, but it could get a lot of the devices in there. Once you have devices in your building, you also need to connect them together. For mechanical, this is using ductwork to connect your equipment to your diffusers. For electrical, this is circuiting the fixtures in your building to the panels. For plumbing, it's using pipes to connect your fixtures to your utility connection. These connections are a little bit more complicated than laying out the devices, but it's still doable in terms of things a computer could conceivably handle for us. Laying out diffusers in a ceiling is pretty simple. You just need the right number of diffusers in a space. Getting the ductwork connected to it and laid out properly in the building is a little more complicated. You have to think about the airflow through the ductwork and the other obstructions. So that's a little bit more complicated. Same when you think about electrical, laying out the receptacles in a room is fairly straightforward. Connecting those back to the panel, again, is pretty simple. You have to think about how many receptacles are gonna go on a circuit, how you're gonna group those circuits together. There's a little bit more engineering that's going on there, but still a fairly straightforward process. In the same way that we have chat AI interfaces where you can type a question and get an answer back from the chat bot, you can conceive of giving an AI a building definition and having it coming back with a layout of the MEP devices. Where AI is going to struggle and where the real work is going to happen is in that building definition. Think about the last design you got from an architect. If it was a Revit model, how well modeled was it? Were the rooms well-defined? Did it have good ceilings specified? Is it a model that you could feed into heating and cooling load calculations to get values back? or use for lighting calculations. In most cases, you need to do some cleanup on the building model to make it usable for engineering purposes. What the architect gives you is some degree of messy all the time. Interestingly, that may actually improve as AI helps architects create their buildings. If you have an AI creating it and helping with that, rather than just the architect doing the modeling, you might actually get a better, more useful model. But as we wait for that, when the model comes to the MEP engineer, it's gonna to need to be interpreted before it can be used for layout. And this is assuming you get a Revit model or an IFC file. What about the times when you get an AutoCAD drawing or just a PDF of some as-built or a hand sketch from the architect? Then the first step of the generative design becomes take this arbitrary image and convert it to a building model so that then we can lay out our devices in it. Again, that's something that's conceivable that AI could handle, but that becomes a much harder problem than just laying out devices. So as you watch AI in the MEP space, so those are the two places to keep your eye on. People are gonna be talking about generative design for doing layouts because that's the interesting final result that you're gonna to wanna to use. In order to implement that, AI is going to need to be able to take the messy models that it's given and be able to create something that it can actually do the layout off of that will probably be talked about a lot less in everything that you're seeing, but that's going to be the hard sticky part before we can get to the interesting generative design portion. That's a very straightforward way AI is gonna be able to help the MEP design space. The next question is, is this gonna take away your job? In the short term, 
No, because this problem hasn't actually been solved yet. It's an idea. It could be implemented, but it's going to take some time to actually get an implementation that's usable. But fast forward a couple of years. Let's say we actually have solved this problem and we have AI that can generate a good building model that you can then do a layout of all of your devices from. You shouldn't lose your job over that. Laying out devices is one of the least valuable things you are doing as an engineer. It's important. It's critical. You have to do it. It's not where you as an engineer are adding a whole lot of engineering expertise to the process. You're still going to be an important part of the team to make sure that that layout is well engineered and handling all of the other parts that are not just the layout of the devices in the building. In fact, it's going to free you up to spend your time on the more interesting parts of engineering. It's analogous to all of the other ways that computers help us with our engineering. Previously, mechanical engineers were spinning ductilators to size their ductwork. Now that's going to generally be handled by software for doing the ductwork sizing. That didn't diminish the value of the mechanical engineer or take away their job. It freed them up to spend their time on the more interesting creative engineering rather than the rote calculations. Same for electrical engineers. When we switch to using Excel for panel schedules and suddenly you can add up all of your loads for your service loads and you're no longer having to add that by hand, that's not taking away the job of the electrical engineer. It's automating the tedious calculations and setting them up to be able to do, again, the more interesting, creative parts of engineering. AI will eventually be doing layouts for MEP design. Before it gets there, we need to figure out how to take messy models and turn them into usable models for AI to work with. And when it does that, it's not gonna be taking your job away, it's gonna be freeing you up to spend time on the interesting creative parts of your engineering.